Welcome to Live in the Moment Podcast. Today we have a special travel edition. We are on the road, as you can see. We're in a hotel room. We're in Kansas City, Kansas. We are in Kansas right now. Yeah. Um, how how was your trip? How are uh, how are you doing so far? Rough, rough to say the least. This is a special case for a trip for me, because usually I get you know. You you come out on your trip the first night you get in you get maybe ten hours of sleep because you're tired from your travel day you go to bed early. You really you really take advantage of that to make sure that the trip's going to be set up right. Now for me, unfortunately, this whole weekend before the trip, I've been stuck doing data conversion, so I got about two hours of sleep between Saturday and Sunday, and about two hours of sleep between Sunday and Monday, getting this work done. So today I've just been exhausted. I've gotten almost all of the work I need to get done done. That's not good. all of the work I need to get done done, but we're close. So I don't think it's going to be another midnight kind of night. That's or good. Or 5 a.m. kind of night as it were yeah. the last two times. You can only Ooh. handle so much of that. I yeah, mean, you can do two in a row. Really I'm, I'm 22. I'm early. I, you know, early in my years. I can still handle that sort of thing, but I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, it still takes its toll, oh, even if you can man, recover theoretically faster <laughs> than, than an older traveler. But, you know, we've traveled for a long time. We've traveled many to many different places. So we've had a few weird incidences throughout that process. It's an arduous process, traveling. You have to get everything together. You have to mentally prepare for the travel. You have to get in your car. You have to make it to the airport. That's always stressful. Mm-hmm. There's always a lot of traffic at the always. airport. Uh, you have to fight crowds. and It, it can be a real pain. And uh, after you go through all that, you have to hit security. And that can just be the worst yeah. thing ever or surprisingly easy. It's never a never pleasant process, but sometimes it's easier than others. But uh, this, in a recent trip, I was heading back. We, uh, we had gotten to the airport. We had a red eye. And uh, we actually checked with the front desk to see if there were any tickets available for earlier. Because we had gotten to the airport much earlier than we needed to based on the red-eye flight. We were going to be there another four hours Mm -hmm. before the flight. So we check, see what we can change. Uh, uh, Dad didn't want to go. On the earlier flight, he couldn't get the size seat he needed uh, to be comfortable. So uh, I didn't care. I just wanted to go home. So he ended up changing it for me, and I get an earlier flight. But this earlier flight has been boarding for like the last 10 minutes. I didn't fully understand that when I got the ticket. But then I start heading heading down to the area, and it it took a bit. I had to kind of briskly walk to the security. I get to security. I think this can't be that bad. There's like eight people total in the whole security area trying to go through. I'm like number three or four back in the line. I mean, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. But uh, the people... People that are at the bins trying to get their stuff collected, they have completely blocked it off, and they're not making decisions and not moving. And this is not acceptable to me at this point, Mm -hmm. you know, having had time to look at my ticket and really take in the gravity of how quickly I'm going to have to run after security. Mm -hmm. I was getting a little little nervous, and I was rude, and I tried to step in front. And uh, then all of a sudden, they figured out what they were doing, and... She's like, you know, you're, you know is, is it going to get you there that much faster? And uh, in reality, yeah, it would have. Because uh, after they went through, after taking however long it needed to take them, they finally get through, and uh, security says, all right, well, we need to check the scanner. We're going to have to do a little thing. It's going to take another few minutes before you can, before we can let the next person through. I'm two people back mm-hmm. at this point. Okay, so I'm waiting in line. You have to take your laptops out here in the U.S. of A., and uh, anything bigger Safety than a first. cell phone. Anything bigger than a cell phone. And that's the new one that really kills me. Because I have some DJ equipment. If you want to actually grab it, it's right there. I have some uh, DJ equipment that I use in the Build a Beat podcast. And you've seen this lovely equipment before. And I have to take th- these things out, put them in their own bin. I have a, a bin for one laptop, a bin for the other laptop. Yeah. And there's actually another device, too, that I have to put in the same bin. But then it's shoes, belt, backpack, sweat, sweatshirt. It is a total pain. Yeah, I mean, even the camera that we're filming this on had to be taken out of its bag and put in its own bin during the travel out here. 
It was a lot. It's rough. So, but with all that stuff in my uh, bag, or in the bin, Bins. clearly visible to anyone else in line, the guy in front of me looks at that. He goes, "Are you a DJ?" <laughs> and you know, technically, I'm not a DJ by trade, so I don't consider myself a DJ. I haven't practiced that much. I don't mm-hmm. think I'm that skilled at it to really say I can jock the discs. But <laughs> but in this case, uh, I was a DJ. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. There He's you like, go. are you a DJ? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm a DJ. Why not? I'm like, I, there's no other way to explain yeah. it. It's like, no, but I do this this podcast thing on YouTube. I do this music thing. I'm a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a DJ. For the day. For that day, DJ. I was a DJ. To that guy, I'm a DJ. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I hope he still thinks of you as a DJ. I, I hope so, too. That, that, I hope that, every that now really then, impatient DJ. I hope every now and then he goes to a club <laughs> and he's like, I wonder if I'm going to see that guy. I wonder if he's well, going to be Well, maybe guy one day he now. will. Well, I don't, he didn't seem like a type of guy to go to clubs. Okay. He seemed like a type I would have probably, I could have hung out at Megacon. Like, he was a cool dude. Oh. Like, I liked him. I, I tend to like that. Some of the nerdier stuff or the people that are more into that kind of stuff i don't know why they just they tend to be usually pretty nice yeah um, usually Not but always. well in this case this guy was nice because i'm sitting there waiting they're doing the thing and i end up explaining because i am just like shaking fuming and then uh <laughs> so i end up saying to the tsa uh woman that was standing there i, I said it's like man i'm like about to miss my flight it's like already boarding i don't I'm barely gonna make it. It's like, all right, well, like you know, we're gonna manage to do it. Like, it's just still gotta wait a few minutes for us to run this, run something through it. And uh, the guy in front of me, the the guy that thinks I'm a DJ, he was nice enough to go. You wanna go in front of me? Like for when it, uh-huh. it switched, because I was two back. He was just the one guy in front. Wow. He was nice enough, grace gracious enough to let me go through, nice. and I did. And I don't. I don't mess around. I go as quickly as I can in the airport. So it's not like he got to take any longer. But I bust through, and I have to try to slam all that stuff into my backpack really quickly. And that's a lot of stuff. And I was really hoping not to break it. And I didn't. But, man, I could have. There's a lot of knobs and stuff that can break. And it just goes into a normal pocket in a backpack with two laptops behind it pushing it. So it's it's potential for, for an issue. And that's, that's something I'm probably going to have to deal with. Yeah. And that's that's my own fault, really. But in this instance, it was very inconvenient to have to slam all that in there. I quickly like get my belt. I don't think I got my belt on. I, I had it enough to where it wasn't gonna fall. Like <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how I grabbed it. But I grab everything, and I go to run out. I go to run to my gate. But before I even do that, I'm so courteous. I stacked up my bins and put them to the side. Like, I started going, and I'm like, no. And I turned around. I pulled them over, stacked them, and then ran. Got go. an audible laugh by one of the TSA guys. <laughs> he just laughs. And I just ran. <laughs> Sometimes, man, you know. It's like, no, I can't just let it sit there. I have to do something. <laughs> so... I've been there, man. Yeah, even though I was really late, I made it just so barely. Ran up, the door was obviously already open. I, I end up, I was so frantic but so tired because, as you'd imagine, that backpack's pretty heavy. And I'm running full steam. And I'm trying to run in a way that I'm also keeping my torso kind of tight so I'm not slamming the stuff, breaking those knobs I'm talking about. So, so it was an awkward run, but it was quick. I get over there, I'm exhausted. There's two desks before I get to the actual door. I didn't know which door to go in. I didn't know if they closed it. I, I thought I missed a flight. I run up and I just just like yell at the first guy I see in the first desk. I'm like, did they board the flight already? And he's like, and then I, I just kept going because I wasn't about yeah, to miss yeah, it. No, I was like, okay, he doesn't stop. seem to know. And then I kept going. Like, There's a woman at the next desk. I'm like, did I miss a flight? It's like, nope, you just made it. Fucking yeah. wow. <laughs> just made it. Oh, and then I went on the plane. I was just sweating. <laughs> Cause I sit down. I just <sighs> and I'm sweating. I'm in the very back of the plane because this was you know that transfer yeah. that quickly. I they barely got you. it. They put you in group eight or whatever. They barely. I was in the very the back. Yeah. yeah, and and I sat down, and, and the gal there was just looking at me. He's like, "Did you run?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yep." Yeah. It's like, "Well, you made it. You can relax now. <laughs> it's all right." 
Just, she said it very calming, not like yeah. I was annoying, but it was. You run. It's funny. <laughs> She's <noticed>. no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just really overweight. <laughs> that actually brings up a really great story. When we were traveling with Dad, I can't. Were we on our way? Were, we must have been coming back from E plus. Okay. And we get to Charlotte International Airport. Our flight out of the original airport to Charlotte was delayed. So we get there and we're connecting and our connecting Charlotte flight is boarding such with a Charlotte's big a big ass airport. airport. And we get in in C and I think we had a no no, no we got in, in like F because it was a puddle jumper and we had to board in C. And we, so we had to clear like the entire fucking airport and the doors were closing in 10 minutes. Like the boarding process was finishing in 10 minutes. Now we're small gentlemen. Our father is not. <laughs> yeah. And Stephen and I That's, just looked yeah. at him. He's like, you can leave me here. So we take off. Oh, did, did he say that? See, I'm pretty sure I just already took off. Yeah, he was like, you can leave <laughs> me I was here. already going. I'm like, I, so we, I'm we not took missing off. it. I'm going home. <laughs> that was, oh, yeah. That was my attitude. I'll leave him wherever. I'll so make we're it. running across <laughs> this airport. And I think this was the time where. It really makes a difference to not take the people movers if you're trying to get there quickly. Because, yes, for the most part, you get a clear space to walk. Nobody's courteous if you're being an asshole and running on a people mover. Unless it's completely empty. Yeah. So, you know, in fairness, it was faster than everything. So we're sprinting past all these people movers. Because, again, big enough airport that each individual gate wings c d e f they all have a series of people movers not just one yeah a series to get you from back to front that's how big this is and we're skipping them all and we're running and there's that frantic moment when you hit one of those like weird little lobby things yeah that's got like entrances to four different gate areas you're like, which one's mine yeah you're very frantically looking there. for signs <laughs> like where is it <laughs> Yeah, like you're looking at your ticket. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> and you're just. It's, uh, and we were just. It's always just a bunch of people just looking really confused in the middle of those areas, just like, do I? Uh, I came from. <laughs> it's a very big airport. We were hauling ass though, and we made it. We we made it under the wire. We made it, and that was the one time I can recall sitting down on a plane and then just immediately sweating because I had been running. And it really hits you when you it. get on the plane. And then I sat it down really and hits you there. <sighs> sweat. Yeah. And it was funny because we sat there for another five minutes and I looked up at the front and I saw Dad get on. Yeah, because <laughs> he walked. He ran a little bit. Yeah. He hustled. But his concern was once he gets going, he can't stop quickly. And he didn't want to mow a bunch of people over in Charlotte Airport. Yeah. <laughs> or get hurt falling. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's not not a good way if uh, oh. if you're not going to stop in time. You either got to bail on the ground or hit somebody, and that's neither. And it's, it's funny because while I was looking at flights, because I'm the one that booked the travel for this particular trip, they give you a little warning flag now next to the flight to say check the connecting time, meaning hey, if this flight's delayed, you're going to be screwed with your connecting flight. So uh, always check that when you're booking flights. Always check the connecting flight time. You never want to be screwed over and miss your connecting flight because it just cascades into terrible horseshit. Yeah, don't run them too close. No. No, even if you're stuck in an airport for an hour, it's better than missing your connecting flight and being stuck in Charlotte for a day. <laughs> <laughs> or getting a new ticket or something, you know. Or, yeah. Flying or, at a different know. time and even later. So, I mean, mm. you didn't win. No, yeah. I guess it's the moral of that. Ooh. Oh, man. Baggage claim. Oh, my God. Is there God. a proper etiquette? You know, I'm, Stand I might back just be until a you jerk. See your bag. Stand back until you see your bag. Stand back until you see your fucking bag. That's I'm always my so philosophy. I'm just of walking up the baggage claim and seeing all if these people. If we all just stand just back, around. you know, give a good two yard distance, maybe. Like, it doesn't have to be huge. No. Just a bit that more people can fit in the ring and people can actually grab their bags. Or people even need to be able to see and grab their bag. <coughs> just enough room in the ring for me to see past you. So I know when I need to force my way through to grab my bag. Yeah. Because they don't even leave visible, like, they don't just not leave standing room. They don't leave viewing room. That Yeah, that's my issue. Which of is why the container. I, you know, like, how inconsiderate do you have to be to not even leave viewing room? 
I'm calling out everybody that's watching this that has ever just walked right up to the baggage claim belt and not left viewing room or standing room for anybody, even though your bags weren't on the conveyor. And here's the kicker, because I don't mind people queuing up at the baggage claim when they were first class and their bags are priority. Yeah, because their if bag. You're, if you're boarding first, group C, just back up. Yeah, just let let things happen a little bit. But it's like I've been there. My bag's been the first one out on the conveyor before. And I was justified in standing against the conveyor because I knew within the first 10 bags, because there was only 10 first-class seats, my bag would be out. So all of us lined up, all of us got our bags and left. That is the one exception that you ever even have any sort of reason to be standing next to the belt before it starts moving, is when you know your priority and you know you're in the first 10 bags. And And you're running late for things. Get it, get out. Get out of everybody's way. Yeah, nothing wrong standing near it. You but know, you don't have ready. the. You still don't have the block viewing room. Oh, actually, probably the bigger thing. Even if you are standing, and I'm gonna just contradict myself, even though this is something I harp on all the time, like every time in an airport. But even just standing close and kind of blocking the way and this, this and that, that's not the real issue. Hmm. If you have a bag, step back. Pay attention to where your bag is. You know. You're not worried about people stealing it, because it's probably not going to happen. But people need to be able to move and stand and do things, and people don't seem to pay attention to their bag, which is a physical object that trips yeah. and injures people. <laughs> Especially if you're tall and can't see it out of, you know, out of your periphery right away, and you got someone dragging there. And if you're walking, don't do it in stages, pulling the, the bag. Just roll it in a consistent thing the stages yeah, i mean I, I guess if you're sta- if you're standing still and you're inching forward in line that's just what that is but it's like don't and I'll, don't swing your arms when you're carrying that's what, yes, I mean, yeah don't swing your arm because you're, <clears throat> you're I, I don't know i don't think people realize how pattern. much they they just block off everyone else from doing anything it's crazy so i have the four wheel bag and i keep it vertical and i keep it next to my one little tight unit i get through my shit yeah no, it's like I'm definitely not one to uh, <laughs> manspread to use the uh, a dumb term. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, because I'm super courteous. Like you have to keep your legs a certain distance apart so you don't crush your boys. That's just anatomy, and uh, a lot of the feminists that are harping the manspreading thing, just be quiet. Mm-hmm. But if you are one of these people taking up way too much space, it could be bags, it could be your legs. It doesn't matter who you are, or what it is. You're a jerk. Yeah. And that's true. I'm cool with deriding people for that. So yeah. <laughs> so when I have a bag, I had a, a two bags. One long one with the tripod that that camera's sitting on and my uh, backpack. And it's all in my lap right in front of me. And I didn't take up more than one seat on a bus, a small bus. And there weren't even enough people to really justify me squeezing myself. Yeah, no. no. You're talking the rental car bus, right? Yeah. You saw me do yeah, that. I always get compact. I always try to stay within one seat. There's this, you know, that's why I stay so thin. <laughs> there's this glorious thing at the very back of the rental car bus where there's the bench of four, but the space between the right w- w- edge and the left edge of that back bench are so incredibly close to the other benches that run long ways down the bus that unless you're thin, you can't get back there. And it's tight enough that it's uncomfortable for the person in the seat next to you, too. So if you grab that seat, even on a busy bus... Nice. Yeah, no mistake. Guaranteed leg room. Because nobody can put their legs there but you. And, uh, yeah, you're going to be the last seat that gets filled up next to you because nobody wants to sit right there crammed in the corner at the back of the bus. So we uh, flew southwest. And, uh, I mean, it went like any other flight. I'm not trying to complain about that. Yeah, but it's nice. You get to pick your seat. And uh, we've I've gone plenty of times with uh, our father who... Uh, Needs a larger seat, mm-hmm. uh, so he uh, he really just takes takes up more room. So people don't generally want to sit next to a bigger person. And uh, when we would travel together, we would uh, sit in such a way we both try to look as big as we can. We wouldn't take the middle seat. But we'd look so big that no one would want to sit in between unless they are small, or you know mm-hmm. so. So it's just a little strategy to try to try to know, either encourage small if you, people. Or if it's not a full flight, together. you can end up having a free seat between. Yeah, you. and that's what you want. Yeah, that's the dream, but uh, 
There was one time. Sometimes it's just a full flight, and you got to deal with it. It was mad. You got to try to pick the small person in that case. If if you're two big people, it's like small person. Uh, I was on American, and we had a full flight, and Americans assign seating, and this was like the most magical moment because I was on my way out to San Jose, and it was the first leg of the flight from Tampa, to. God, I think Dallas is where you lay over for that. It may have been Phoenix that time. We've laid over in a few different places to get to San Jose. But I'm sitting there, and me and the gentleman, that he's in the aisle, I'm in the window. And I'm working away on my laptop, waiting for them to tell me to put it away. It's, you know, I got on pretty early, and I'm towards the front of the plane. And they're like, it's going to be a completely full flight, blah, blah, blah. They keep harping on this. We're just sitting there doing our stuff and like, all right, the forward boarding door is closed. Well, he and I look up. We look at each other. We look down at the empty middle seat. And he goes, I've been flying this route for 10 years and not once has a full flight given me a middle seat empty. And I'm like, well, looks like it's your lucky <laughs> day, bud. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And we looked back and the whole plane was full except for our middle row. And it was just like, couldn't have, couldn't have been any better. Couldn't have been any better. You were living the dream. I, we were. It was. It was the yeah. most. When magical they say moment. it's a full flight, you don't expect a seat. No, you don't. You expect to be stuck crammed next to, God knows who. Yeah, I mean they're all people you don't know usually. Usually. Oh, this one time. Speaking of, uh, and this is going back to what I was saying. The big people in seats. Uh, I got to a seat once, and uh, this was. It wasn't Southwest. It was assigned seats. But uh, it was this older couple, and the older gentleman was in the middle seat, and he was very large. And, like, when people get kind of large, you can either be compact or kind of look like you're melting. Yeah. And this guy was kind of melting into my seat. Mm. And worse than that, when I had gotten there, he had already put in the, uh, he already put the... The, the armrest The armrest up. So he just spilled over like into my seat. And I wasn't sure if the armrest could even fit down. And then uh, just didn't have the balls to say anything, I guess. And I just rode in the flight like that. It's just it's really weird and uncomfortable. So my flight... sit against the window would be my thing. Yeah. I mean, your wife, I would think not care. Yeah. But the... then she probably didn't want to sit next to some sure, random person. Sure. So I get that. On my flight back from South Carolina the other week, with the one that was delayed heavily, there was a dude in the row, my row, but on the other side of the aisle, and big gentleman. He, he gets to the row, there's a dude in the window, and there's going to be a dude in the aisle. He doesn't know that at this point. So he's like, he's the middle seat. He knows that. And he just straight up requests, he goes, hey, look, do you mind if we leave the armrests up? The guy in the the uh, the guy in the window was like, sure, I don't care. And uh, the guy that took the aisle was like, yeah, whatever. But uh, this is, and I'm not trying to make fun of him because he was a really nice guy, really nice guy. First time I've ever seen somebody need a seatbelt extension on an airplane. Well, yeah. Wow. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. I don't think had a seatbelt extension yeah. or like he wasn't that big. But it's for, like it was his spillage. He knew he was yeah, big, guy, and yeah. he approached it right. Because the ass yeah. first... Oh, I mean, if, if everyone agreed to it around him, then he must have approached it yeah. in a very positive He way, was a so. super nice guy. Just, yeah. uh, you um, know, and you can't say it for every case because you never know who's the one having the bad day, so to speak. But um, I, you hear stories that people relay about, oh, this and that happened. And then I question, it's like, well, how were you really acting? Mm-hmm. When, they, when you hear someone's talk about a response that they got, you're like, sounds like you were being rude based on the response. I know you didn't tell me anything that you would have said that was rude, but something tells me there's something in the body language, or they were having a bad day, you know? Yeah. So, you know, because people are so driven by their emotions, and I say people including me, because everyone is, so you, it, it distorts our perception, and you can see things as everything is negative. Just because you're having a bad day or in a bad mood, but you know you could, you could be at like an ice cream festival, with bouncy houses. Mm -hmm. You should be happy. Well, that's probably a horrible combination. 
You have yeah, to, that lactose is lactose and bouncing. That mm. is a. I I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call it the vomitoria. Depends on what your age is. <laughs> Depends on what your age is. The vomitoria. Sure a little kid could get away with it, but like anybody over the age of 12 or 13 is probably going to throw up if they jump around a lot after lactose. Yeah, the vomitoria. That's almost the point. It should be like all trampolines and dairy products and alcohol if you're a 21. Really just throwing it out there so that people throw it out there. Oh, yeah. Yikes. I don't Yikes. know why. I don't know why anyone would want to. I well, think I mean, you got to think back to like ancient Greece. There's a fetish or Greece. something. You get the, the whole <laughs> banquet hall where you can just like continuously eat and okay. then vomit and then keep eating. The vomitorium. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> have deals on bottomless ice cream? <laughs> yeah. Deals on bottomless ice cream and time renting the uh, <coughs> trampolines. Uh, that would, Might even make it like a trampoline room. Do. That way you could do group events. You get a whole group together. <laughs> Easier to disinfect. It's, it's, it's all. you got to think of it from a business perspective. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got to... Find a company that creates like linings, but like for rooms, it's just that plastic lining, just completely. Because that's not going to make us look like a serial killer to buy that. <laughs> not that kind of stuff. It's got to be better. It's got to be more purposeful. Because you got to have it work with trampolines. You can't have it breaking up and cur- and bunching up and all that kind of stuff. It's got to be a little special. So well, not I mean, just the your run of a mill murderer plastic, you know. There's some there's some there's some high end murderers that get some high end plastic out there. Oh yeah, the <laughs> oh yeah. They don't cheap out on it. They get no. the real the good they stuff. You gotta watch the blacklist, man. They get some real plastic. <laughs> For those of you wondering, because of my lack of sleep, my eyes are dry and on fire. Yeah, and just travel in general kind of keeps you tired, and I, I I tend to just get get some bloodshot eyes just from being out of town. I think a lot of it's like dryness and stuff from like the airplane and dryness in the new area. Oh, now my eyes are water. I'm seeing your eyes are water. <laughs> Look I do have some visine. I'll hit you up I with here in a minute. I have visine too. I just didn't take the plop it in before coming over. Travel. Travel. We've done a lot of traveling. We really have. We've traveled for so many different applications. We've traveled for software. We've traveled for... <laughs> other for video production. We've traveled for... Uh, Fun. Yeah, other things. <laughs> Fun. I always prefer traveling for software. Yeah? Only because of the amenities. I got gotcha. you. I'm not flying Frontier. I'm not stuck in a room with three other people. Not that that's terrible. No, and it's, it's, a, an it's a great experience. experience. Yeah. And it's a great way to do travel on a budget for a company. Oh, actually, it's real way to do it. Bag. Real Airbnb way to do it. Airbnb. Group, for sure. If you got a big group and you can... Well, that's what we did the last time we traveled with them was Airbnb, which was the way. Oh, amazing! Oh, it was fantastic. We ran a mansion, same price as it would have been for like four hotel rooms we would have had. Yeah, everyone's more comfortable, feels more homey. You have more time to. And it's a better place to film. It gives us an actual home base for filming. Yes, it's a good trip. We've had a lot of great trips, you know. Traveling's a wonderful thing, and if you get the chance, I encourage you to do it. Not everybody does, and that's unfortunate, but. It is yeah. definitely something that will help shape your life for the better. Crazy it's, experiences and all. And it could be kind of a reset, too, because it's, it's very taxing in many ways, but it's so different that if you're already pretty tired and busy, it's not... It's such a different thing, because mm-hmm. it's so many newer experiences as you're going, as you're traveling and doing this stuff, that it's not the same type of tiring... But man, when you get back, you're refreshed. It's a nice little it's a break. Thing. It's you're a, ready to work again. It's, it's like a, a nice even though you were working break the whole from time. your cell phone, as well. When you're flying, yeah. when you're in the air, especially if you have multiple connecting flights, just large periods of time, where you're forced still, yeah. to not not be texting or talking. Or... I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually talking on their phone on a flight. I've seen people texting. Can you imagine fifty thousand, forty thousand feet. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, I'm here. Uh, no, that's not a fan. No, that, I'm on an airplane. <laughs> Can you imagine calling into a meeting? 
If I were on the other end of that There's line, there's no way. Yeah, it'd be, be like, like mute your line. line, mute your line, or hang up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some crazy stuff. I can't. I can't remember if it's concourse C to D, or D to C in Charlotte. But there was one time when we were running late for a flight and we had to book it. And there's a nice little shortcut between those two concourses because they both get connected by the American Airlines Admirals Club Lounge. So if you go through the lobby of the Admirals Club, you'll go from concourse, I can't, I think it's D, to concourse C without going all the way down to that main interchange, getting confused as to which way to go because you really have to turn around to go to D. Mm-hmm. And it's fantastic. So anytime, also, Charlotte does not have smoking lounges, so keep that in mind. Tampa International has smoking lounges, thank God. But not every place has smoking lounges. But keep in mind before you travel to try to look up a schematic at the airport, because they're all very, very, very different. And one, it'll help you just not get lost. The first time I got here to Kansas City, it is the weirdest layout. Yeah. They've got a couple of like three-fourth circles that are their airports, that are their terminals, and the planes come up around the outside and the inside the cars can ride up. It's their little round where they would drop people off and pick people up. You get inside the building. It's just one long building. With like a line down the center of that building, essentially, that separates airside from non-airside. So when you get off of your flight and you see signs like baggage claim left and right, mm -hmm. the first thing you see is a thing that says, like, do not enter, exit only, such and such, and it's blocked by a TSA agent. There's somebody standing there. So I'm following the signs for baggage claim, and I get to one end of the building. It dead ends because it's just a little half circle. It's only, it comes to an end. And I get there, I'm looking. There's nothing. There is nowhere. And I turn around, and there are signs for baggage claim going the other way now. And <clears throat> I'm confused. And I look at this other gentleman who's looking at me. He goes, you too, huh? <laughs> we had no idea how the fuck to get the baggage claim. I'm like, yeah, we followed a yellow brick road that went nowhere. So we're both walking back towards where we deplaned. And we get back there, and there's the exit there with the TSA agent. We walk up. I'm like, hey, how do I get the baggage claim? He goes, oh, it's through here. And he opens the door up. They're there not to guard the door, but to let you out after you deplane your flight. That's the only way to get out of airside and over to the baggage claim. And they're, again, they're the same building with just a wall. A glass wall with doors, periodically. Yeah, it's not like a wall up it to the go ceiling. All the way up. You can, it's, just a, it's just a perimeter, if you it's, will. It's like a wall to like a, a kid's play place. That's yeah. the way it feels. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It was the most confusing thing in the world. And I wish I had looked it up or asked somebody before I got there because I wouldn't have looked like such a dumbass. Because Dad and I deplaned separately because he was in first class. And he knew what to do because he had been here before. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get to just follow his lead because he was already through the door. It was quite the event, to say the least. Yeah, quick turnaround and <laughs> add a few minutes. Yeah. I did think of something. Uh, I was on a Delta flight, which uh, mm -hmm. Delta has the... Uh, TV screens, I think. Whichever Some one I was on. Do. Yeah, I was on one that happened to have them. I actually didn't care. Like, I, I didn't want to uh, watch anything. I had some podcasts I wanted to listen to. Just, you know, personal taste. Just felt like doing that. And uh, the screen to the left of me, uh, this woman was sitting there. There was a, a man sitting to the right of me. And uh, her screen was in, like, Arabic. And uh, she was trying to change it. And she just didn't know what to do, because it's all in Arabic. Yeah, how you I was like, well, that's weird. And uh, she asked me for help, and, and I do a lot of IT type of things. I love to troubleshoot, and I'll fix tech problems. It's, my life is just fixing tech problems. So uh, I just go right into troubleshooting mode, and I look at it, and I go, okay, well, uh, let's see how mine looks. Well, mine's in English. Let me figure out the layout in English. So I found the language. I did the selection. Okay. And then I uh, went on to hers went to the language would not change it was just stuck in arabic it made no sense so uh i tried for a while to try to get it to work what i ended up doing because uh you know if you can't get something to work if it's still having a bug <coughs> issue sometimes there's a workaround so what i did 
is uh, I had to just use mine for a second to look at which movie she wanted to watch. And then she found it on her side using this, you know. Mm-hmm. And then she watched uh, uh, Daddy's Home too. Oh, nice. Yeah, she was, she was watching that next to me, and then uh, the guy to the right of me was watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh. So I just kept kind of glancing over, just like appreciating. Nice. Either side, yeah. Nice. I love a good movie. I love a good in-flight movie. I think I saw Daddy's Home, the first one, on a flight. We Yeah, we, we saw it together. together. It was on my computer. I showed you that. That's right. Yeah, we had a few uh, few mixed drinks beforehand, and we laughed really, really hard. Were we in really first hard. class that time? Yes. That's, That's how right, we had the I drinks. I was still under 21, and, and you were just getting them poured. We were sitting next to each other. Oh, I was the one that was smammered. Yeah, you yeah. got smammered. I, got I don't a, even I remember, because I just got... Oh, man. They they gave me, like, a double... They pour hard in first class sometimes, They didn't even dude. pour that. No, they, they gave me, like, two little bottles with eighth Jesus. Diet Coke. So I got tanked before we took off, and Which then had a drink, be. and then <laughs> it was watching that movie, and, man, did I enjoy it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good stuff, but uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you gotta troubleshoot. You gotta think on your feet, and uh, she was really appreciative after that. Oh man. Which is it's you know, <laughs> that's cool. But I just like fixing problems. <laughs> it's kind of a weirdo like that. On a semi-related note to fixing people's problems, I found out the other day that I just have the universal employed face because everywhere I go people ask me for help as if I work there it doesn't matter what color I'm wearing <laughs> they just assume you're working there right so I'm in a dark navy blue which is not Walgreens color dark navy blue and jeans right <laughs> they were and I, I guess they wear Walgreens blue. red right or, Walgreens well, is they a wear powder blue. blue with a red Walgreens W or just the full word Walgreens on their yeah. shirt and when I said red I meant the Walgreens yeah. itself so this isn't red the word mm-hmm. That's so I'm right. wearing navy yeah. blue, and I'm coming up the escalator. Okay. It is, keep in mind, it is 1 a.m. I'm getting some cold stuff for my girlfriend. It is 1 a.m. And melatonin. And I get upstairs, and as I'm coming up the escalator, there's a couple going down the escalator. And she goes, oh, are you opening up the pharmacy? First of all. That answers a few things. First honestly. of all, it's <laughs> 1 a.m. If someone at 1 a.m. is asking you about the pharmacy, something, you kind of have an idea why she would think you're an employee even though you're clearly not. Someone had pills on the mind. (laughs) But it's just like, I'm tired. My eyes are bloodshot. I'm wearing a t-shirt that's navy blue, not a collared shirt, and jeans. A t-shirt? Now here's the thing. You know I have a lot of keys. See, cause you, you dress all fancy. See, I thought you came in with something nicer on and people just assumed. But you wore a t-shirt and they assumed you're a Walgreens employee. T-shirt. Yeah, they wanted something bad. They're now, itching. keep in mind, I don't have plain color t-shirts. All of my t-shirts have designs. So this isn't like a plain color tee. This is a tee with a design. I, and you've seen my key ring. I do have a lot of keys. So maybe she saw the key ring and thought, he's going to unlock the pharmacy. That's the only thing I could personally think of that had her get the connection wow. between me and the Walgreens pharmacy yeah, maybe. upstairs. The way you got it on the ring like that, maybe. But yeah, on your jeans, okay, maybe like yeah. Here's another. But still, here's I would another have been example. Janitor probably before I would think. Uh, I am. Yeah. And this time I am with Ty. <laughs> You're with walking the, through really? Target. Okay. Neither here's of us are wearing time. red, or khaki. And this gal comes up, excuse me, sir, can you help me find the such and such? Oh, sorry, ma'am, I don't work here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fucking with somebody, not wearing the store colors. And it really was the Walgreens experience, though, that just taught me. I just have the universal employed face. People just, oh, he looks employed. He probably works here. No, he looks knowledgeable, I think. You should you should hold on to that there one. There we go. It's a knowledgeable he looks, he looks knowledgeable. He knows. Yeah, but it's just, stop fucking asking. Because <laughs> I don't. He doesn't. I don't know. He knows nothing. <laughs> oh, it, it's it's very interesting. Because it's like... It's obviously only ever stores that that happens at. I'm never at a restaurant. Somebody's trying to get me no. to take their order. I'm it's, never on a plane and somebody mistakes me for There the are order. other social cues that let you know they're a server. Yeah. To be fair. So it's hard to mistake that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Nobody but, mistakes me for a flight um, attendant. I don't know why I can't think of the word, but like a Target or any of those. Retail. Retail. It's, uh, they're holding on to merchandise. They have it all displayed so people will come in and buy it. But people aren't necessarily coming in every second, and people aren't buying it all the time. But, you know, they make money because over time they're able to do Bye. that. So, in retail, the chances of you finding someone standing around that works somewhere, you know, is a lot better. So, it's a much easier yeah. to make that mistake. But not if you're wearing a blue t-shirt. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Now, it's happened to me at Best Buy before, but I was asking for it. <laughs> yeah. You were wearing khakis and a blue tee? I was wearing uh, khakis, polo? but I had my blue polo, my blue golf polo. The one that has, like, nothing except for a tiny little logo up here. Yeah. Very easy to mistake for a Best Buy employee. I did not fault that person at all. Like, hey, because they caught me from behind. Hey, sir, can you help me with that? Sorry, I don't work here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's understandable. I'm wearing the work colors. So also keep that in mind when you go to retail. Find out what their people wear and don't wear that color. Or be good at deflecting questions. You know, just be mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't work here. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've been asked, and I'll, if I can figure it out or I know, I will uh -huh. help. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I don't work here, though. But, uh, over there mm -hmm. the but I have a yeah. pretty bad sense of direction so most of the time I'd have to be <sighs> sorry but don't work here it's yeah. like I've been here 20 minutes I'm still trying to find what I'm looking for yeah, I'm like, way coming to me yeah I'm too timid to even ask an employee <laughs> so like, no, maybe I, I'll just follow you around you can ask <laughs> guy you see maybe eventually you'll ask a fucking employee <laughs> just go through the uh, gauntlet yeah. asking everybody in the store I keep leaning against this painting you know what's hard it's, it's an elusive thing to do Asking a Walmart employee something. You don't even want to. Even if you check it out. Like, you know. It's, they, they give you that look like, oh, shit. This guy might want to ask me something. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> they give that preemptive yeah, oh, aura of, oh, please no, don't ask oh, me. Oh, no. The whole just, like, it's, I've noticed something. That, I noticed squirrels do it. Uh, if they see you and they see you see them, they will stay completely still, almost like, you know, and then act almost like you're not seeing them. Mm -hmm. But they know, and you can tell they know. Like there's a different, you can see it in there. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're just pretending like they don't see you. But you know. But you just need help. You just want to know where something is in the store that's not very well laid out. No, they're really not. Every time I have asked though, it's always been a, oh yeah, and they walk to the end of the aisle. Down on aisle such and such, and they just like point, and then they go back to what they were doing. But it's like, sometime, one time, I was looking for Velcro straps because I was putting in a security system. And I needed to strap the DVR unit down. And I ask, is, I'm in the grocery department over in, in, you know, Walmart, and big Walmart. He goes, oh yeah. Other side of the store, back wall of the auto section. Walks off. What? So I walk clear across the store, not realizing they had an auto section to begin with. I get to their auto section. Back wall? It's like, there's no back wall. There's no back anything. It's on the side wall of the Walmart, not the corners. <laughs> So it's like, I, I go to the wall, I'm looking for it, I'm still not seeing it. So I finally find one of the guys over there and ask him, and he walks me up to it. And it was on a wall towards the back of the auto section, but not at okay. the back of the auto so section. So he didn't give you bad information. It was in the auto section, he was right about that. Okay. But it was just like, you just pointed ambiguously and told me to walk across the store, and then proceeded to walk away. <laughs> I'm very interested as to why you're not more concerned about me buying stuff from this store <laughs> it's, a it's a chain yeah. they don't have to be concerned about it because they're, they're employees of a chain they don't have to think about the bottom line for Walmart because Walmart's already thinking about its own bottom line yeah yeah I guess I don't, I don't know how that happens I don't know shout out to Bill Clinton for helping start Walmart with that whole taking the teacher's pension of Arkansas and investing it into well, speaking Walmart, of Bill Clinton. Which is only, you know, <laughs> highly illegal. But here's the other deal with that. He also took the, the airport. 
and made it an international airport with customs so that all of the goods could be shipped directly into Arkansas. Mm. To cut down on shipping costs. So you uh -huh. actually have the whole customs gamut that you can go through in Arkansas. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. Brilliant right there. You don't even think about that side when it comes to helping out a business, but to make your airport as a government to make your airport something that accepts customs and has that process down, you've opened the world for businesses in your place. Totally. It's huge. That's why places like Florida have huge businesses. That's why places like Texas have huge businesses. That's why places like New York have huge businesses. Anything along the East Coast that has an international airport with customs yeah. gets good business because they can get goods in that way. Yeah, we live in a very international world at this point. Very international world. Very international. So much so that even U.S. to Canada is still international. You can ship small quantities in, in, in small vehicles across the border without getting hit with the tariff. But hmm. If you're doing any sort of real distribution, you've got to pay a lot of taxes. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's a crazy world. Not only we travel, but a lot of our products travel. Mm -hmm. When we were at the airport, I saw uh, Prime Air. I didn't realize Amazon had their own fleet of planes just for Amazon Prime. Because they had the whole Amazon swoosh. That or they're getting ready to launch a new airline that they haven't talked about, which would be stupid. Because airlines are not where the money's at. Amazon's already where the money's at. <laughs> <laughs> they're already moving the money. <laughs> yeah, they're already the money. Yeah. Oh, on a weird side note, not related to travel as we wind this down. Something for our viewers' pleasure. And I told you about this earlier. Um, there was a recent acquisition of Microsoft acquiring oh, GitHub, yeah. which is a huge open source hosting platform for projects where you can store all your code, handle your pull requests, keep everything organized, and actually work with multiple contractors on your code without crossing wires. Well, Microsoft just acquired that. And it's already something that's being used across the board. GitHub is like a it's a, it's a standard. And now it's owned by Microsoft, so Microsoft stock is going to go up, which is good for me because I already own Microsoft mm. stock. Anybody who doesn't own it is already too late to the game. But for this particular little Yeah, clip. this one. I mean, I've been having I've been having that for a minute. Now I've been having Microsoft stock for like two years now, and I'm up over 100%. There you it's go. It's not a bad long game stock. Yeah, I mean, with uh, Apple... The, the change on the phone from the 3.5 millimeter jack, that normal headphone jack, to then you have Garbage. to use some dongle. Garbage. That's some that's some bull. And then the, uh, the new you, laptops, like what? Aren't they getting away from like 3.0 and USB? Maybe that was the other ones. Yeah, aren't they getting away from USB even? Am I thinking the wrong Thunderbolt. thing? Thunderbolt. They're getting away from their Thunderbolt. Yeah, they created a new Thunderbolt, didn't they? It's a, yeah, it's like a USB 3, basically. Yeah. And it's just like, guys. If it's not just USB 3. Stop changing Yeah, they just keep changing ports. it to the, where it's like it, making things obsolete and you have to get all these extra extensions and dongles and all this other crap. It's like and, your product uh, isn't good enough to warrant that anymore. It no. was back in the day, but it's degraded significantly. Like yeah. It's it, your shit together. It's weird, because I've used Mac and Windows quite a lot, and when, there's a big difference I've noticed for a long time. Mac was just a lot faster, more responsive. Things would come up. Windows took a little time, but actually, I worked a lot with Windows, so it's really slow when you start. Yeah. But once you get going, it's just as fast as. Oh yeah. Anything like, it, but it has to be in process. If it stops for a while, it. Slow down. It's gonna take a minute to get back up to speed, but it gets there. And I've noticed Mac slowly not being this good. I don't know if it's just my laptop or, or you know, just my own crazy mind seeing things, but. It has not been running as well. No, my MacBooks really have had to restart it a lot. It's yeah, just it really feels good. more like Windows now. So it's they're almost even it seems. Which is not good because Windows is a much better price point. It's a much better price point. It's more customizable. You can. More I'm power sick power of running out of space. Oh, that was something I was annoyed with, with the phone. The world, so I switched to uh, the Google phone. What's Pixel the deal two. with that cloud, man? Their cloud still stores the photos on your phone, and if you delete them from your phone thinking they're in the cloud, it deletes them from the cloud, too? Like, the fuck? Maybe I'm just incompetent when it comes to using their cloud? Yeah. It, 
but I'm paying 99 cents and I still have no fucking space on my phone. Oh, you gotta remove that thing. Because they tricked me with that too. They make it seem like if you get the iCloud, oh, we'll make it so much easier to manage your storage. Uh -uh. No, you gotta take a fucking course to figure it out. Uh, so I, I had a Dropbox. charge. And you know, it took me so long to actually get rid of it. The uh, charge. Have you tried to get rid of it? I couldn't find it. I, I couldn't know, I find where to do it. It took me a long time. I had to sit, like look it up and, and everything to finally get it off. Yeah, I know Horrible. it's located, but... No, it's just terrible. Horrible. It's not a good way to do it. So on that sour apple note... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with that sour apple. Wanna, we'll, we'll wrap this travel, a special travel podcast. We'll uh, be back in town uh, by next week. Yeah, yeah. I'll we probably will. do a build a beat. Yeah, that while I'm cool still out here. here, so you'll see a special edition build a beat come out as well. Uh, any other closing remarks? Um, as always, thanks for tuning in to live in the moment. I was Alex Giuliano. I am Stephen Giuliano, and uh, hope you have a great week. Make it a great one.